Hi guys, welcome to Clans and Dynasties. A little bit different from how we normally record these videos. Um, today I'm joined by Philip from Irish Medieval History and we're covering the McLaughlins, the heroes and villains of uh, the McLaughlin clan. And uh, I must say there are plenty to pick from. Uh, a brief background on these guys. The McLaughlins uh, are a Kinloan family, originally from Donegal, and related to the O'Neills and uh, the uh, O'Dealys. So these this family uh, originated around, their progenitor was around the early 10th century, and it was Donald McKay, um, and he shared kinship with his brother, Niall. And uh, we're the two main branches now, the McLaughlins through Donald, and the O'Neills from Nile. Although we will cover some links between the two uh, as we go through the video. So uh, I think really we should just start with uh, Donal and Nile's sort of uh, kingship and relationship and go from there because they, this is a very, very, I don't know how, how to really say it. It's just, a, it's a very interesting bit because uh, they both follow, uh, it's an old tradition, yeah. dual kingship, was not unheard of in Ireland uh, throughout uh, Irish history. In fact, there are records of three kings ruling at one time, and that was just the nature of Tanistry. Uh, I have a video on Tanistry if you want to see it, uh, but basically, uh, in a basic sense, uh, it was ruled like three to four generations from a king, you were in the Durfine. And that was the immediate family on who could succeed the crown. And uh, that's basically, that was it. You know, unlike Wales and uh, Scotland, uh, Scotland would use it until about 1163. Um, and Wales was very set on it. It was only three generations. But Ireland could fluctuate from family to family. Um, it really did try to avoid the father-son inheritance um, because... If you do that, you bring the pool of successors smaller, therefore, you know, eventually the fam risking the family dying out. So, uh, yeah, Donal, how do you want to attack this? <laughs> no, um. no to, to give a bit of background here, I'm actually from um, Irish Medieval History, and it, it's a channel that does the podcast every once in a while. If you haven't checked it out, make sure to get over and check it out on Irish Medieval History over on YouTube. Um, Myself and Michael do it every pretty much every Wednesday. We have something up, which is pretty awesome. But um, this topic in particular with the MacLucklands is an extremely interesting one because when you see the MacLucklands start to really rise up around the 10th to 11th century, it's a period in time when Ireland itself is starting to really unify. Um, the MacLucklands come from a branch of the Northern L who were quite happy um, going between the kingship of Tara with their partners down in Mead the southern inel however at this point because like you know yourself michael where you're a northerner and down at the tippy top <laughs> the very bottom with the o'briens the fitzgeralds and the mccarty's now although the fitzgeralds hadn't come into ireland at that point you did have the likes of the mccarty's who at the time were called the onocta and you had the o'briens who were really pushing for unification of the island you know uh, the Vikings had been in for a while. In fact, I think uh, the Vikings had a influence into the McLucklands, um, especially its name and stuff. Uh, maybe you could tell me more about that. But the Vikings around that whole area had a massive impact, especially the Kingdom of Lucklin, that was very dominant around that area and stuff, and were harassing uh, the McLucklands, although the McLucklands did also allow themselves to go and fight the Vikings in Ullid. Sorry, not the Vikings in Ullid, the Gaelic. <laughs> I'm going Viking mad here, like, um, yeah. My yeah. Well, I mean, is that the uh, McLucklands came into a point where the world was completely changing? It's a really exciting time because you can see the massive changes. You can see the O'Brien starting to rise up and push. You can see the Vikings coming in just from the northern part of them, trying to push in yeah. and attack them as well. And the McLucklands are very interesting. On that as well is that they not only have influence within the isle of ireland this is the point where they're starting to flex out as well and start going into scotland as well um we do have a branch of mcluckland's who are also a scottish branch as well which i find quite interesting well i mean uh briefly on the the obviously 
the, the Vikings were or Norse were well established in uh, Ireland by sort of um, you know uh, when Donal and Niall were uh, sort of on their rise up and rise. The McLaughlins, um, in my opinion, I have studied both names uh, or all three names, um, and uh, I am of the opinion they're from three different branches. Uh, the McLaughlins, the only the problem, and it's a similar problem we'll have throughout whenever you're doing Irish history is that similar names would move into Ulster um, from Scotland and they would move into a similar area and then that is where you get the unable to over time the names would almost become very they wouldn't have been spelt the same in the back in the day but then as we get people writing down their names later on they write them the same way as their neighbor um, and they could be from totally different lines and I think the McLaughlin's um, uh, of Norse uh, descent the, Recent DNA studies do show that they are of Norse descent, but there are McLaughlins of Gaelic descent, which would be this family, and that's been proven they are from the Donegal area. Uh, in the show, and mainly Kingdom of Gaelic would be there, would have been their heartland, which again we'll go into. So yeah, you've said it there. This is this is the time where the Vikings are uh, coming in and settling in the Norse. To feel that the McLaughlins right now was. Bumping into the same thing myself, the McLaughlin's just north of Donegal, the ones that had mm. taken on from the north side. Do you think that there's yeah. any, you know, a, a, an actual source itself that they all originate from? Or do you think that they, one side is just calling themselves McLaughlin's, the north in particular, are just turning around one day and saying, all right, we're McLaughlin's. Or do you think that there is a source between both McLaughlin's in Donegal and the north um, McLaughlin's just north of them? I um, have uh, of the opinion, the uh, problem is that most names in Ireland are patronomic, and that is they are named after an ancestor, um, or, or um, they're named after, you know, uh, someone's, uh, I don't know, whether they have red hair, or, you know, stuff like that. So, and that is a common thing, so you will have names rise up. Look, at Kelly is the best example of a name in Ireland. It has like 16 origin points in Ireland. It's the most common surname or one of the most after Murphy's and stuff. Mm. So I McLaughlin's we had, like you said there, uh, the area of Lachlan, uh, Land of Lakes, um, and it's believed to be uh, Scotland, Norway, or or areas influenced or owned by Norse sort of uh, leaders at the time. So I think McLaughlin and McLaughlin are two different branches just sound the same and over time of a bastardization of our language and of people writing it down, they have just amalgamated over time. I think they're two separate. Now that's not to say that there is a matrilineal links between an intermarriage between the two families, so that you would be related on both sides. But I of the personal opinion and uh feel free to comment if you have sources or anything that you want to say that your other opinion. But just from recent DNA st studies from uh, people like uh, Dr. Tyrone Bowes um, shows that there are different families, um, with diff you know, Gaelic families and Viking fam Norse families. So I think the two Donegal families of that, no, the Ulster families, because obviously there's also another question of the Enail down in the south and the Enail in the north. Some people dispute their uh, relation. And uh, I, for one, believe they are related um, but and it's just purely because you, that how close you have to be to uh, the relation of a king or a previous king to be entitled to the throne. These families alternated like most things between the, each Durfina, each family group. No one, no Enil, no king would allow uh, a family that they did not believe. No, no family group would allow a family they did not believe to be related to them to in, in, inherit the throne. It would just be a political threat. It would undermine the whole thing. Um, and I don't think, and these people know their relations. They know who they're connected to. Um, I believe, uh, you know, Chain last week said about the, the, the Gauls and um, believing about committing things that they preferred m remembering things, memory. It was all about memory. And uh, the been, Gaelic families would have been no different. They would have had no problem reciting a whole generation. We, we can't do it now. There's multiple reasons for that. But they had no problem doing it then, and uh, you'd have very easily be able to disseminate who's. You did have um, the bards. Um, God, what's the official name in Irish? I cannot remember. 
it's completely eluded me. But anyway, they did have bards that did. Um, they went to kind of bard school. The name is just completely on my head right now, and I have the book behind me, and I'm not going to go through it right now just to find it. Spend the next hour looking through the book. But anyway, we a bard and but yeah. the Irish language. Um, but you did have a bard school where people went to for about was it 15 years or so god somebody's going to butcher me in the comment section now but anyway you went off to your little bard university and in that university you were taught every single king and it wasn't a case of here's your book you sat down every single day with your master and he literally told you the poem or whatever you need to learn and you had to learn it perfectly in front of him yeah. and then he if you think you were finished you'd have to do it again and again and again um, and that's how they remembered each and everything. It's not until later on uh, when you have the English invasions coming in, Cromwell coming in and stuff that they're suddenly going, God, you know, there's mass extermination here. We better write this all down. That's the point mm -hmm. where you have the kings being written down and stuff. So, yeah, of course, um, everybody knew who everybody was related to. However, you did have the likes of the O'Briens and stuff who were cheekily rewriting history and stuff and adding them to oh. history. They weren't far off. I mean, they were modern uh, people, say they're um, historians, say they're related to the uh, Deshi clan and Downing, um, which were, have been proven to be linked to the Onokter anyway. So they weren't, it wasn't like a complete, like, I uh, complete fabrication. Deleted a few names from the list. As well. And we see that anyway. We actually have the annals. Um, more, uh, I keep referring to modern DNA and you kind of have to now. It's because... Um, everyone's into it but the uh the family trees certain kings and who didn't really achieve much or um maybe weren't of note uh are taken from the list and people are saying oh i am related to this king he's my great 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 grandfather and actually when they do the dna al analysis they find out he's actually 10 grandfather um and about three names have been eradicated or names have been amalgamated um so yeah, it's uh, it's not so much of like a complete rewrite. It's more of a just uh, like you said, it's just a wee propaganda twist, you know, <laughs> just just a, just a, uh, yeah, just a little sprinkle of something. Again, either had the I mentioned them are just briefly there. Um, a family related to McLaughlin C. O'Dealys, who were a bardic family. Um, you know, these people would have called could have called you out on it, and bards in in Gaelic tradition and. I hate having to use the bar term too, but am I actually terrible? Um, uh, were highly respected. Um, these, this, in fact, there are uh, numerous cases of uh, the punishments for killing a bard, or even even go further back, even insulting a bard. So, um, you know, this is that these these people were definitely, um, you know, the great historians. If only historians today could be elevated to such a position, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Especially with the of our history going on. Anyway. <laughs> I yeah. So, right, but we digress. Uh, like I say, the kingship. So, um, back to Donal and Niall. Uh, Donal uh, and Niall uh, would rule, co uh, co rule uh, Gaelic. Uh, and uh, but Niall would be the one that sort of would rise, as it were, uh, higher than his brother. And. Uh, we sort of we come across a few um, fa fa uh, name favorites of uh, Phillips here. You know he um, he was uh, around the time of Flanshina, uh, which is uh, Phillips' uh, go-to, oh. and uh, yeah, uh, he was. So Niall was defeated by Flanshina at the the Battle of Cross Keel or Cross the Keel, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. But after Flan's death, Niall would uh, marry his daughter Gormla. And uh, the well, uh, you're smiling there, like there's a, like a <laughs> yeah. but uh, and the clean high king. No, no, that's because Niall was doing the dirt against Flanchina, <laughs> which it was um, no, it was Flanchina's first son had betrayed Flanchina and joined up with Niall, and uh, mm. both two, the two of them actually usurped Flanchina because Flanchina had he had a new wife, so he wanted the son of his new wife to become not just um king of tara but king of ireland so that means niall was never going to be a king and so mm. what um niall did was that he went off and he made a pact with flanchina's first son 
So that way, when Niall died, his first son would take over and he would be um, king of Tara, high king, as they said. So yeah. uh, Flanshin, his first son, and Niall joined forces together. And first off, Niall killed, in a big, massive battle, uh, Niall killed Flanshin, his first son, and then the two of them went off and usurped Flanshin. So it's all dirty. Yeah. But he, uh... Well, the thing is, this this is a this is amalgamate two very uh, noble families in Ireland, um, and you know it's it's sort of start of um, never mind the Donal and Nile related to Kenneth MacAlpin, uh, the King of Scots, you know their mother, um, so their mother. So this is this is already a family that would consider itself very prominent, um, you know, when it comes to lineage. So, but then Nile, as you say, King of Tar, High King. I will refer to the term High King. Um, but it is a loose, just it's more just to say it. Uh, disclaimer here now that it is King of Tar, but um, and rather than flirting between the two, um, then we get we meet another person who again is another fa- uh, favorite of Philip is uh, Sictric, who kills Nile <laughs> in, in an ambush, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, it, I, I think I feel like you know that the anger you have towards Nile for for his usurping. You know, he get his, gets his come up by uh, a favorite of yours. So he has Sigtrick, um, uh, who's um, obviously from Dublin and uh, the uh, Northern England. So, yeah, then the McLaughlins kind of, you know, the, the, the two families, the O'Neills and the McLaughlins, for the next sort of couple of generations, alternate between the throne of um, the uh, Kingdom of Elix and uh, the King Lowen. Uh, now, between the two families, there would be sort of, uh, sometimes you'd have the King of Elik and the, the chief of the Kinloan. They wouldn't be the same person. Um, and uh, so these are two ty- Because in Irish succession laws, although land and cattle were expected to be distributed between the family, between the sons, you can't cut up a title, the title of king. And that is, uh, you know, why you'd have, you know, you have to then have your your son, or well, it wouldn't be your son, it'd be your nephew or uh, your uncle. Seniority was also, Eight was a big, big player in this as well. Um, which is uh, why the uh, names can get a bit confusing after, you know, after a wee while. <laughs> um, we're going to ignore most of the O'Neills, um, even though there's a possibility of relation, I think, we'll just stick to the McLaughlin name. Um, and then you know if there's any sort of links into the side, we'll we'll, we'll attack from there. It's so uh, thing which way we're going about this because you specialize in specifically the clans and dynasties is the name here, mm. and I'm literally the overall. <laughs> like, I know what's going on overall, but anytime you go into the finer details, I'm just like, huh? And vice versa. When I'm talking yeah. about a big show like Flanchina and stuff, that's when I shine. <laughs> The two, this is why our podcast is so good. <laughs> you know, if Irish medieval, you need to subscribe to me now. <laughs> yeah, you do. He's uh, he's just broke the one thousand mark, and uh, yeah, come on, let's let's get him to the two thousand mark. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, um, uh, so should we head to Murta next, sort of uh, McLaughlin, um, after, or you want to sort of bring it in a couple of generations? Um, it's interesting because it does go back and forth for a bit until uh, male shock. Oh, that's what I, I'll ask you in a second now. So I'll explain what's going on. What happens is that it turns into, you know, the email trade back and forth between each other. But the problem is, is now the Emer, the guys in Dublin, the Irish Vikings, as they're called, or Hibernian, Scandinavian, Norse Gales, whatever you come, they become the dominant family in Ireland, right? And that's why a lot of people say, oh, the Viking dictatorship or whatever. But you have to remember, these Irish Vikings, by this point, they spoke Irish. Um, we don't know if they were writing Irish literature because both Brian Bruce saga and the Dublin saga are both missing. So we don't know if they wrote in Irish, but most likely they did write in Gaelic. Um, their mothers are Gaelic. Uh, their father, fathers are very uh, multicultural at this point. <laughs> so they are, they're Irish, and the Ushergra have called this out a few times. They're literally saying, look, the Irish Vikings are the worst Vikings. So they are as Irish as they come. Even their name, um, E-Emer, you know, you can't get it anymore <laughs> Irish, right? 
Yeah. So they're speaking our, um, Gaelic in Ireland, but they're speaking Norse out in the world of the world. So when they're in places like York and stuff, they're speaking Norse, right? I say that just to highlight how Irish they are at this point. The EEMR, on the other hand, they're just going back and forth, but they're not to the same standard as the EEMR yet. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Um, when we get up to then 980, the EEMR have finally caught up and they're finally able to beat the EEMR back. So back in 919, that's when the EEMR jumped up to the top peak at the Battle of Isle Bridge, where we just saying there, where Niall, Niall ends up getting himself killed. However, Mel Shocknell has just jumped in. Mel Shocknell the second, he comes in, he fights Olaf at Eimer at the Battle of Tara in 980 and he beats him. Now, Olaf afterwards, he goes into retirement and he just goes off to a monastery in Iona and spends the rest of his day praying to God. Mm. What I found interesting when I was doing the research earlier is I found that Mel Shocknell the second, right? And this is where it gets a bit weird for me. Maybe you'll be able to clear it up. But Mel Shocknell II, who's a Southern Nail person from Mead and not up around Donegal, supposedly there's a male Lochnell who are related to them. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, uh, Omega. Oh, uh, yeah, God. Uh, I had no uh, clue what was going on. The Omeglans, Omeglans, it's just that's how it's originally. Um, the, and then it, it's sort of, again, oh, they've been uh, sort of. Someone said, you know, how do you spell it? What's your name? Oh, Meelan. Oh, 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 Lachlan, right. Okay, yeah, no problem. So, you know, so it, and that, that's sort of how it's happened. Because it's the problem, the age-old problem with Irish and Scottish surnames. Yeah, it didn't have, um, origin, like, when, when the, it was the, the believe it or not, the, the English um, were very good at uh, censuses and land uh, because they needed to know what they were taking and who they were giving it. And the thing is, to find out who was on that land, um, these aren't native Irish speakers. And not only that, they, even if you had someone that was sort of uh, aware of a dialect of Ulster, wouldn't be aware of the dialect of Kerry. Now, I don't need to explain to anyone that how different those two were. Two, two native speakers of the same language, saying the same word, can sound totally different. And uh, whether the family are related, um, traditionally, would be unknown. But... The thing is, with this one, the uh, again they are recognised by both sides of the family. So, and that's what you need to get at is that the both sides of the family recognise the others um, by allowing these people to inherit the throne under contest. Now, the thing is, we've touched on this a lot of times before. It's not the whole family on both sides contesting rulership of the new faction coming up. It is factions within the family. This is a very political sort of succession. All successions are in the fact that it is the, you will have family breakdowns where they want their own person into power. And you get these factions and they will align with each other. They'll backstab. They'll do everything they can. It is so politics. Just look at your own, wherever you're from, look at your own and just, change the political party to a family name and you'd just be able to work it all out. It's the exact same, the same shenanigans going on in the, on these levels. So yeah, the, there are McLaughlins who descend from Mayor Shockman II. Um, but again, paternal links there. They're from the same line. They descend from the same person. Um, and again, I talked to you this before the podcast and it's a good example Recently, McCarthy's have been doing DNA tests all over the world, and they found out that every McCarthy is from the same male line, but they don't all join at the same point. So you have uh, the Anokter, and he has 12 sons, and they all go down, and they have 12 sons and 12 sons and 12 sons. You're finding that maybe each generation, one of those pe persons, People are call themselves McCarthy. They all descend from the Anokta. They all descend from the, the first first progenitor of that uh, family, but they don't all descend from one McCarthy smack bang in the middle. And this is the same. The McLaughlin seem to be no different. You have generations coming around going, you know, I'm a branch of the O'Neills. My branch maybe isn't as uh, prominent as it once was. The McLaughlins have got a wee slot here. I mean, McLaughlin, and a good example of that is we see that at, during the, the period around uh, the 11th century, the McLaughlins 
were struggling to find an heir, someone to stand up and take control of the clan. And they asked a rival faction of the O'Briens to come up and take the kingship of the Kinloan, of their, their wee branch uh, in Tullyog. Um, so they ruled, they were used as a buffer state a wee bit um, from the O'Briens advance into Ulster. Um, what who better than to stick one of your one of his cousins on the front line? Because you know, if uh, if these cousins beat the O'Briens, well, then they take the the kingship of uh, Clare of Thomond. So yeah, it wasn't unheard of of people bringing in other people into to rule these titles, and it would have been especially more pre- it would be more prevalent within family groups. You would want someone you are related to even distantly to take the throne. And that is why you have multiple branches of McLaughlin's. But if you all did a DNA test, you'd find you're all descended from one person, um, you know, around the fifth century. So uh yeah, that that's how that's how the that's a really long winded <laughs> explanation of how 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 it comes about. It's really good though for the video because that's what people are pretty much are after. They want to know why are there so many branches, especially when you have so many kingships kicking about. You think there would just be one line, but in fact, as you clearly pointed out here, not only is there multiple lines, but there's a reason why. Uh, one being the fact that um, when the English came in, they went to, when they were doing their census. Oh, this sounds similar to this. That means you're one family. That's it, it, like the people doing the census. They just didn't care because they were the foreigners who came in. They were invading and getting up to a lot of stuff. We don't have to go into detail of what they were getting up to, but they just didn't care. You know, if you sound like that person, poof, you're that person now. You know, um, I think that does most of the, um, you know, the randomness, uh, especially when you yeah. have uh, McLuckland's is a good example as well because McLuckland's are just going off the lake, as we were saying earlier. So that mm. means you have a Norse family. They're going off the lake. You have um, the lads from Donegal, the actual McLucklands, who also go off the lake. And then you have the lads, Mel Shocknell II, who somewhat was a play on words that sounded similar to the McLucklands mm. of Donegal. And now the English who are writing this down are like, oh, well, you sound similar to that family. Mm-hmm. And the, t- the reason why it's such a good thing to put onto this video is because you have so many other families, as you were saying, the McCarthy's are another example of that, who end up falling into the same you know trap so it's great for mm. even if you're not related to the mclucklands this explains so much you know um i'm a Hayes, you know ojeda and mm-hmm. we have the same problem do you know very interesting well this is the thing and the, and the thing is we've lost the ability to disseminate between the family branches but the in the time and at the time you have to remember these families knew better and Taking the throne, there was a big ceremony when you took this. A big, you went to your inauguration site, you brought in all your clans. Or to, but there were family roles. We've touched on this with the Bardic families of the O'Dealys. But uh, in the Kinloan, you had the O'Keans and the O'Hogans, who, whose job, hereditary job, was to inaugurate the king of the Kinloan. Mm. It, it was his position, uh, these, these chiefs' position. Now, they're not going to inaugurate the wrong person that effect that would affect their prestige there and it's almost like today you wouldn't do a job badly because and then go oh do you want to hire my mate because if if you do a bad job no one's going it's all about prestige it's about you know where your standing is in the class you don't want to lose your standing where you are these hereditary titles you know there's always people it's very much like a king families waiting to take that off you always undermining you always trying to take your land your cal and your title and uh so you that, that this is something you've got to you know think about going forward um so yeah like i say the uh we were up to um my, my Shocknell the second had just uh, mm, taken yes yeah, so the, and we found out why the mclucklands in the donegal and why the mclucklands don't want to meet both have the same surname down to the English. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is that it's down to the English, or um, you know, or, or anyone else sort of coming in, uh, writing in afterwards. It is just um, the name has just become amalgamated over time, um, and that's all it is. It's just you know, it's a, a historian's uh, biggest sort of enemy is really time, um, because you can lose so much to it. Um, the degradation of you know items and name. We don't speak the same English that they spoke back then. So again, it gets amalgamated again. Always, 
not the same Irish isn't spoken the same. You know, it's it's just always changing. The language changes, and with that, so does our names. Um, I'll never forget seeing when I did the O'Doherty's. Um, the amount of different branches of that family, how many different variations? Two hundred and fifty. There are registered. Two hundred. Two hundred fifty. Uh, different types of uh, name, and most. Of the, and the the funny thing is, actually, the O'Doherty's are uh, almost an anomaly in the fact that. Um, they are pretty much descended from one line. Um, the, there is a there is there is a, a branch down in uh, Clare, um, Doughty, like D A U, but they've managed to almost stay separate for the most part. It's um, and but yeah, it's but talking the, about the ones in Clare <laughs> are related to the other. Yeah, no, 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 they're not related. But what I mean is the name uh, is only really really getting mixed up. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, in the last sort of couple of two hundred years or so. But the main Doherty branches are all related, pretty much, and they are there's like two hundred and fifty variations. So uh, yeah, it's <laughs> this is the problem you have with surnames. That's why I spend so long with doing my videos <laughs> because I have to make sure that I'm following the right line. Well, that's why we're doing this People, today because you have your massive project uh, up in uh, Scotland right now, isn't it? Yeah. Is it ready until June? That's literally why we're making the video now. So your algorithms <laughs> die. But I still think this is an amazing video. Like this is what your channel is all about. It's explaining what the story is with the um clan names and stuff. And I think the reason why this video is a success now is because we're actually explaining the basics of okay, you could be related to this person, but because of this mess over here, you may not be related to that person whatsoever. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um but yeah, uh that's, that's that's basically what I try to do, but like, and then this is why we're on to the McLaughlin's today. And uh, like, say, um, it was you had Neil Sharkman, uh, he would then form a, a branch of his would sort of come out from him, Clan Coleman's line. Uh, but again, they're still part of the Killing they're still part of related from Nile and Nine Hostages, they're still, there's still paternal links there, uh, which are recognized between the two families. Um, and you would see it. Eventually, when the O'Neill starts to come to prominence, they still recognise the links there too. Um, so after sort of me a shot, you really uh, Donald McLaughlin, um, who becomes High King after sort of, um, uh, and he's another favourite of yours, Philip Murter Bean uh, O'Brien. Yeah, he opposes Donald's. He opposes Donald's uh, succession uh, or claim to the High Kingship. Um, and those two sort of go toe to toe, um, so but uh... yeah, it's a funny one. Uh, you guys should have just submitted because this is the point, right? Because before <laughs> you get channel it. viewers get confused, <laughs> once again, I'm from the south, right? So I'm a huge O'Brien supporter, right? And Murtaugh Gibrian is a part of the O'Brien clan, right? And he writes off to the Pope and he wants to get recognition from the Pope, and the Pope's like, Yeah, you get rid of slavery. I'll recognize you as uh, King of Ireland. So he gets recognized as King of Ireland from the papacy, from, um, what's his name? Uh, your man up in Scotland, the King of Scotland with a camel. And the King of Norway also recognizes him with a marriage alliance. So overall, he's recognized as King of Ireland, except for you boys up in the north. And you boys in the north are like, no, no, we're the High Kings of Ireland, right? We're the High Kings of Ireland. <laughs> Disgusting. Disgusting. So... It gets to a point where Magnus Berlex come o comes over to help Murtagh Breen crush this rebellion, by the way, because that's what it is. You guys up in the north are rebelling, right? And you guys end up, the Ullid ambush Magnus Berlex and you have him killed. <laughs> like, yeah. this is the king of another country, of another kingdom, and you go off and kill him. Like, you guys, you guys, <laughs> what are you on, like? <laughs> well, always, always been, uh, always been one, one of, you know, our own sort of go our own way but yeah it's uh, and even almost we aren't a unified from um but we are almost unified in our opposing to anyone else telling us what to do we're more we're happy we're, we're happier being told what to do by you know our own rather than being anyone you know you know I'm anyone south of the I'm anyone south of the boing just <laughs> I'm getting in with this dig right now. When I read this in the history book that you went off and ambushed, when Ullid went off and ambushed um, Magnus Berlix, I literally had the vision of Ian Paisley turning around and saying, Ulster says no. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, 
that's the thing with with, with Ulster. It, it's just I believe the Celtic tradition is Connacht was given you know like the harp or um. But I, I always I don't remember it all there for my area of heart, but I always remember the um, Ulster was given the, the spear for war, um, and that is it. We had, that was that was our our contribution to ancient Irish sort of you know it's warfare, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's it's something we kept up for a very long time. Um, but yeah, so that's it. We we a bit too long, but uh, that's the thing. Yeah, so um, yeah, Murtagh Green sort of has. A, Um, subdue. Yeah, he went. Oh, Brian tried. Ah, yeah, it's grand. I can really explain it. Right. Murtagh Brown tries to go up north and he gets freaking ambushed off the North Indian Island, uh, the Olid. But Mac Lucklands, right? And then he gets. Uh, Murtagh Brain ends up getting usurped by the O'Connors. And then the O'Connors mm-hmm. continue the war against you guys uh, between O'Connor. Well, it continues going until Rory O'Connor takes over. And then Rory O'Connor yes. and the Mac Lucklands start to fight each other. Um, the O'Connors beat the McLucklands, and then guess what happens, right? David McMora is allied with the McLucklands, and he's on the losing side. So he goes off to England and starts 800 years of war. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Um, we have, uh, you know, the, they keep coming in. The O'Connors, yes, like I say, are now the prominent family um, rulers, King Vikings, um, and they have the backing of most people except Ulster or oh, parts of Ulster. Um, as I said, this is, this is really the beginning of the end. And we start to see, um, the rise of the O'Donnells in the, in the East. Um, the, who's, who's it? Murtagh, was it Murtagh, uh, McLaughlin made an oath that he, when he, t- he took, uh, he took hostages from the Ulid. The uh, the the Orion, and uh, he basically made an oath that to protect these hostages and that there'd be no violence. And then he goes and blinds one of these hostages, and that causes uproar, and it basically delegitimizes his rule. Um, you know, uh, the thing is, is he makes the mistake here because again, the families, hereditary families, you have like the Abbey in Armagh. Is is run by the the Keller family. They would be, again become the Keller would be then become the Kellys. <laughs> uh, another name getting uh, mis mispronounced. Uh, but and these are related to the McCanns, uh, and these are a Kinloan family as well. So these all these families are related, and he goes and stabs his own family. Well, there was a Nullid king at the time in the back, basically. Stabs him in the eyes. I suppose would be the real term to use because <laughs> he blinds him. But <laughs> there, it's, if it's that, because I haven't read that one. But if it's not as bad as uh, Ushuga, where they went off, you blinded your man's eye, and then they removed his testicle as well. And he, he spent a week bleeding out from the testicle, like until he died. Like I'm, you know. And see, it's not even the first time. It was the same with um, what's his name is kicking about the same time in the Isles. Oh, I have a video called um, the Irish Viking Crusader. And I can't remember what your name, what your manner's name is, but he got hold of his brother in the Isle of Man. And it wasn't good enough for him to pluck out the eyeballs. He went off and cut his genitals out as well. Like, and I'm like, Jesus. I think he was another one that spent a week bleeding to death. It's just, it's horrific. Like, well, that's the thing, you know, uh, Murta uh, McLaughlin literally, because he, he'd said, he'd said to um, Murray, you know, Murray O'Connor, you know, I'll, 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 look, here's my oath, here's my. You know, my promises, uh, I won't do anything, I'll, I'll keep keep myself to myself and uh, here, you know, I'll take some hostages off some people and we'll just keep everything calm. And then he just goes and does that. I, I can't understand. I, to be there at the time to find out what the reason for that was, because it literally, he ended up being abandoned by everyone. He literally only had 16 followers. Now, I will give credit to, you know, the... Um, you know, uh, Brian Baru, you know, at one stage, he only had 16 followers and he still managed to hold up his, his, uh, you know, rating of the, the North settlement. So, uh, there can be done with a lot of 16, with a lot, uh, you can do a lot. Of, uh, McLaughlin. That, that was the same with, um, Dimmerd McMora, which was McLaughlin's mm. ally. Um, he did, he did it the other way around. Um, what's his name? 
the O'Connors take hostages, sorry, uh, Rory O'Connor takes a hosti- his hostages off him, one of which is his eldest son. And mm. he breaks his contract by going over to England, getting uh, Norman mercenaries, bringing them back over. And that literally broke his um, vow, which then the hostages were all beheaded. And mm. then uh, because he's known as a traitor in England, sorry, not England, Ireland, uh, he's an oath breaker. That's the word. Um, he becomes an yeah. oath breaker in Ireland. Um, so nobody really wants to be around him until he rocks up with the Normans and he starts taking territory as quick as you know. So well, this is the thing. Work, it's an alliance. Yeah. No, but it's a, it is a uh, it is an alliance between Rory O'Connor and Norman um, that get rid of uh, you know uh, Murter um, you know uh, and sends him into exile to England. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, there is, there is, uh, relations, um, between, uh, Rory O'Connor, or Rory, Rory, if you want to pronounce it that way. Um, but, Rory. yeah, Rory, <laughs> Angus, Rory, Angus, Rory, 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 Rory. well, that's the most people who watch this in English speaking. We just kept going forward. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. You've got, so then, um, but he then, you know, after, um, Murtagh's sort of oath breaking. Um, he divides Ulster between the O'Neills and the uh, uh, um, McLaughlins. So he's the one that sort of almost splits the kingship in half, and that's really uh, to as a pro- two proxy states, small proxy states are easier to handle than one giant state uh, to your north. That's constantly going to be a pain in the uh, on the backside. So you know he he leaves uh, Ulster. In half, this family in half, uh, the McLaughlin, and this is where you start seeing the McLaughlins and the O'Neills sort of become the two separate entities where they don't share kingship, um, the kingship between each other because they've been given their own sort of branches now uh, by Rory O'Connor. Um, and like I said, that was to keep two small proxy states to its north rather than one large um, state, you know, threat to its north. Um, and around that time, though, that was like a, that was late 12th century, you've got None other than Hugh Lacey stomping his way across Ulster. Um, so what a time to weaken the North. Um, because uh, if that hadn't happened, I'm sure history maybe would have been a little bit different, or maybe not. You know, one can spe- one can hypothesize and spe- speculate. But yeah, Hugh Lacey starts tromping along there in 1171, mm. and uh, we start to see really. Uh, this is this is like within about fifty years, the McLaughlins uh, are, are almost uh, completely eradicated, yeah. um, and it was just it. Was, you know what it was? It was just the fact that these they were attacked on all sides. You know, um, the O'Donnells are starting to become more and more brazen in their attempts to. You know, the the uh, they they've got great commanders like the O'Doherty's who who smash up in a showing the heartland of the McLaughlins, you know, this is the, that's their ancient territory. Um, you've got the O'Neill's at the heels. Well, nice little rhyme, rhyme there. And uh, Hugh Lacey, obviously, we've talked about the Normans no end. Check out those videos of the Norman invasion of Ireland um, and you'll get a, a sense of just how much of a tidal wave this was for for the Gaelic families at the time, but uh, on the backdrop of the fact that this was a turbulent time in Irish history on all on its own, without foreign invaders coming in and and doing what they did. Um yeah, so uh we have Shocklin O'Loughlin. So that's a nice little uh, ring to it there. He's then killed by the, the Normans in eleven eighty five. Um and uh that's it really that's that's that's, that's the nail in the coffin um apart from when donald um uh, mclaughlin's killed in 1241 which is the, the the lid on the coffin and buried the hatchet and no more mclaughlin's <laughs> is uh What's the you know this is at what point did they have this scottish because i seen there's scottish mclaughlin's as well what point did they pop in because i thought they would have popped in before then or something no um again this isn't they're not related in the sense that they're like kin um, the the name the name exists um, because it's a uh, it's an Irish name. It's a it, it is plain words. Um, I'd almost say if you wanted to like break it down to very simple terms, you'd have McLaughlin, uh, 
McLaughlin and McLaughlin, and that would be that's Gaelic Norse and uh, Scottish. Uh, so they they're not uh, they 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 come across. Because looking at it at the point of view that I normally do, looking at it from the bigger picture and stuff, I got very excited because I've seen McLucklands in Scotland, I've seen McLucklands down in Mead, and I was like, God, these guys really got a boat and stuff, but now you've just killed the romance of it all. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, they are they are very prominent in the area where you would migration by Irish families, whether through the Dalnirida, uh, the Dalrida, and uh, that sort of. Scott High sort of advancement during the ninth, fourth and ninth century, which were the two major pushes into the into the uh, like Argyll and Galloway, um, and that so you do see these families there. The kinship is there, um, but they would there was no sort of kinship as in the, the you know if we're looking for an heir to to a throne, yeah. Oh, we've got some cousin distant cousins in in Argyll. I'm not going to say no. It didn't happen. There was no really uh, there's because to say that completely unrelated. Um, is only setting yourself up to for someone to come along. And go, I did the DNA test. Actually, um, but the records for that aren't 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 very clear. So I'm just going to say it's a distant relation. Um, but yeah. So uh, so that's it, really. That's yeah, the end of my yeah, Karen, yeah, Karen Erdy, twelve forty one, the battle. Um, that was it. The uh, O'Neills became the dominant force. Now um, they they basically eradicated the all the Dorfina. Now the family didn't go extinct. You know we can see that by the fact the name exists today. But also there are records right up until the seventeenth uh, century of chiefs of the name in still in the Inishowen area. Um, you know, just now they're vassals to the Odoherty's who are ruling at the time. Um, you know, and and before, so uh, they they. Fell from prominence, but they didn't disappear, um, and they still had a respected position. Um, most, it's an interesting thing about Irish history, yeah. and there is a saying: "We're all related to kings in Ireland." Yeah. There was a respect for lineage in Ireland and clans and and uh, where you came from, and there was almost a. They only went after the people that were a threat. You didn't go in and try and just take out the entire family. Anyone associated with it, it just didn't make any sense to do that. And there was just no interest in that. You just took out, because like I say, the way Tanner Street worked, it's three to four generations. So if you just take out that pool of family, that's it. There's no there's no, no threat to your throne then. Um, but even then, you didn't want to do that because the ultimate survival of your clan relied on your rivals because... You you can see it. The best example is is with primogeniture in, in in England. You see, I get any of those Norman families that, that came across from uh, Norman. How many of those names exist today, especially in positions of power? Very few, and it's because the families died out so quickly. You know, you got married. You, you all it took is for you to have one daughter or your son to die in battle, and that's it. The family's gone. Um, in Ireland. You know, we we extended that kinship group, and and that meant that no matter what, there was always a son to inherit that, or a son of the great uh, king from from two generations ago. Um, that's why so many of us. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's it. You start like say they they just uh, you then have the Norman incursion then, and it's just the next eight hundred years, as you say. I mean, the um, Fitzgeralds troop on up. And I'm sure the McLaughlins were involved in the Battle of Ballyshannon, um, but in a, in a minor capacity um, in 1247, and uh, where they lose, um, and it would take another 10 years um, for the uh, O'Donnells to then give the Normans a, a good kick, a good kick in at uh, Creedon Hill in 1250s. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, and that's it. The McLaughlins just sort of fizz the light. And become vassals to the Odoherty's. And it's sort of a sad ending, like given that they were so way up there, you know, they, yeah. the, you know, pretty much the high kings of Ireland, the Ardry as they're written in the literature in the 11th century, mm. and then to be, they're just like insignificant vassals at the end. Mm. It's like a <laughs> slow, instead of this big yeah. blowout that you have with some yeah. families, like the Battle of um, Bosworth with the War of the Roses. 
you just have they just have a small decline and then slowly just fizzle out into the background it's it's you know, it's funny because it's not, not like, even like they did. Yeah, I'm not even the biggest fan yeah. of McLaughlin's, and I'm still like, oh, that's kind of, <laughs> you know. Well, see, I um, yeah, I I am, but I'm I'm here. They're, they still keep their ancestral lands in the, you know, mm. in the areas of Inishowen, yeah. but they don't. They're not ruled by the. Not it's not like how it has been where they would be with the O'Neills. You know, it, it's it's also bad to be ruled by your cousins. But to be ruled by the kennel, to be ruled by the kennel call, even though distantly related, goal but claimed anyway. Um, the uh, it's the, you know, it's it's uh, it must have been a hard pill to swallow. I know. Anyway, on to, uh, <laughs> we'll have to finish yeah. up and wrap up here. I have to get the dinner going, yeah. and I've been blinded for the last hour by a sun. <laughs> the sun will go away, and now I've got me just doing this. <laughs> Because I really, I'll put really stuck into this conversation. It was so, so, so good. But now the full hour has gone by and I have to get the dinner going now. So I have to finish up there. Um, Michael, thanks very much for having me on Clans and Dynasty. Um, I'm really yeah. excited for your upcoming project project in June uh, on mm-hmm. the Scottish. What's the name of your project, by the way? I've just called it the Clans of uh, Clans of Bonnockburn. Um, and oh, just yeah. basically, I'm just uh, finding out all the families. Uh, depending how long it takes, depends on whether I'll do both sides of the battle, <laughs> both English and Scottish. But uh, considering how how in depth this research is having to go, um, uh, just it's just uh, it might just be Scottish families first, and then I'll release the English ones later. Um, but yeah, uh, so and uh, uh, how about yourself? What- oh, this week I am covering a very famous woman. You're going to have to come over to my channel and see which famous woman I'm going to cover, but I am covering a very super famous woman in Irish history. Um, She affects Icelandic, uh, Norwegian and Irish history, but we know barely anything about her. Um, So definitely come over, um, stay tuned and subscribe. Um, This is going to be a pretty good video, I'm not going to lie. That's it really right now. And that's yeah. Well, that's it. That's it. So again, thanks for coming on. And everyone, I have links. If you look at Friends of Clans and Dynasties in my um, on my page, there's links to Irish Medieval History Channel. There'll also be links in the description. Um, subscribe. Um, his channel is amazing. I cover family histories and general, but if you want to get into the nitty gritty on specific people and specific events that are really shape Irish medieval history. Get across to the very channel called Irish Medieval History, um, and uh, I also work on there um, on the weekly podcast as well. So, any sort of anything you want covered, I think the the poll we did was quite a good thing there. Oh, yeah. uh, return for that. Um, so I think. <laughs> no, but I'll uh, we'll see we'll see what we can do in the future. If if polls are the way to go, and you just want to see more of that, so you just have more the way this channel goes Mm. comments below we'll we'll both try and reply where we can so thanks again Philip. you go get your tea and uh and uh i'll see you all soon bye-bye all right see you guys